Hey guys, what's up? We are back with another video today, and today we are doing our Notre Dame Clemson video, a video that I have been looking forward to doing all year long. Um, as American Football Network, my kind of co-partner uh, in crime here with um, American Football Network Lincoln, uh, he is a Clemson fan, I'm a Notre Dame fan, so this is a big game for both of us. Um, Notre Dame in a very good position, riding high off of a pit win, 58-7. to uh, Clemson, on the other hand, uh, looking for uh, any sort of rebound after a 24 to 17 loss uh, to the NC State Wolfpack. Uh, these two teams are heading in very different directions as programs in the season, long term. Uh, Clemson has a lot of issues. We'll get into some of them in this video. Uh, Notre Dame, don't get me wrong, they have some issues, but definitely nowhere near where Clemson has them. Uh, these are probably my two biggest fan bases on the channel because of uh, a lot of the stuff that I do with American Football Network uh, and as a Notre Dame fan. So these are probably my two biggest fan bases. Uh, so make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Help me grow this channel by hitting that subscribe button. Like this video if you enjoy it. Comment all your thoughts and opinions down below. And let's get started with today's video. So in order to properly introduce this game, like I talked about earlier, I think it really needs to be said um, what has happened this season so far. So we're going to start with Notre Dame, then we're going to work our way to Clemson, and then we're going to get into some keys for the game for each team, then we're going to get into my score prediction at the very end. So first of all, recap of the season. Notre Dame, 7-2, decent Decent area to be in. Um, definitely not. I think a lot of people expected maybe around a seven and two uh, record by this point in the season. So uh, not completely unexpected. Kind of around where a lot of people thought them would be. Um, I thought they would be uh, eight and one at this point. So not that far off. Uh, kind of in a good overall position as a program. Not the fav. Not your favorite. Um, but. Uh, with the disappointing losses against Ohio State, so close, 11 men on the field probably would have won you that game uh, at the very end, or an uh, interception, or any numerous things. Uh, and then you had a tough game against Louisville in which you just looked terrible, worn out, uh, and just demoralized after three straight, um, a big time, uh, just atmospheres, two straight road games uh, in uh, very large, loud atmospheres that these teams had just not had, uh, four straight games uh, in which you played ranked opponents. Uh, and then last week, um, Notre Dame played Pitt, or I really should say yesterday, I'm recording this on Sunday, um, you beat them 58-7, to it was an absolute smackdown. Um, Notre Dame's offense did not look fantastic. It did not look terrible. Uh, me and Lincoln uh, did have a little bit of a conversation, and uh, he was talking about how Sam Hartman didn't look great. But really, honestly, he did not look as bad as the stat line looks. Obviously, no passing touchdowns, but you really didn't need them when you had Aldrich Estime on the ground, uh, and you had all the special teams and defensive help, as well as a pick six, a punt return for a touchdown. Like You just had all the... Uh, things clicking uh, in this game. The two interceptions, both of them were not really his fault. One was off of a tip, and then the other was a holding call that was just straight up missed. Uh, the Notre Dame wide receiver got held. Pitt wide receiver pulled him, jumped in front of it. There's nothing you can do. Uh, it wasn't a bad thrown. It wasn't a badly thrown ball. It was just kind of unfortunate that the ref did not throw the flag that should have been thrown. Uh, so you had another interception. So I'm not going to blame Sam Hartman for that one. Uh, so both interceptions, not terrible. Uh, not great, but not terrible either. Uh, now on to Clemson. This, on the other hand, is not where you thought you would be at any scenario whatsoever. When you're looking at this team, this team is 4-4 uh, four and four in the ACC. Um, you are... Um, Five and four overall. Uh, this team has a lot of issues. A lot of issues. Uh, this is a team that um, bull eligibility is kind of unknown at this point. Um, you're looking at a team that overall uh, has struggled all throughout the season. Uh, you had a bad game against Duke at the very beginning. Um, you're looking at just overall... Uh, you're not in a good position uh, with a loss the previous week um, to, or I'm sorry, this team is 
four and four, not five and four. I'm sorry, Notre Dame being a little bit ahead uh, confuses me a little bit. But last the previous week, you didn't play well against Miami. You lost 28 to 20 on the road, uh, and the week before that, your offense looked incompetent with a 17 to 12 victory. Uh, but offensively, it was terrible. Cade Klubnick went 18 for 28, 131. Uh, in the Miami game, he went 18 of 34, 314 yards, two touchdowns, and an interception. Uh, and that was after two overtimes, so his stats got a little bit inflated. Uh, and then yesterday, he went 33 of 50, 263 yards, and two interceptions. Just not a good game. Uh, Clemson's defense did play pretty well uh, in all three of the matchups, not really giving up too much. Um, but again, it goes back to just this point that this team is just a very sorry excuse for the Clemson team. Uh, this team is 2-4 and four in the ACC. The best ACC record that they can have is a 500 record. Um, and to be honest, I don't think that they get a 500 record. I think you could very easily lose to UNC. You may beat UNC and you may lose to Georgia Tech. Like, there is... Clemson's schedule is kind of weird to end out the year. You have Notre Dame this week, then you have Georgia Tech, then you have North Carolina. Or no, I'm sorry. You have Notre Dame, then North Carolina, then Georgia Tech, right? Um, Notre Dame, Georgia Tech, North Carolina, South Carolina. Okay, just to get that right. Um, but with this... You're just... You're in an odd position. You really, truly are. Uh, you're looking at a team that... The running game isn't bad, but Notre Dame, you're not going to be able to run on them. You're just not. Uh, the offensive capabilities of this team, it's just not there. Um, defensively, you're not bad, but you're also not getting a bunch of turnovers. And um, so, like, you're just, you're not being able, there were no interceptions yesterday. Uh, there were no fumbles. Uh, when you look at the uh, Miami game, you did get one interception, uh, and then there were two fumbles on Miami's side, or uh, two fumbles on Miami's side. Both were recovered, so you have no issue there. Um, with and then like against um, Wake Forest, there were no interceptions. Uh, there was one fumble lost. You just don't have a turnover making capacity in this defense. Uh, so there's concerns there. There's just concerns all over the place when you look at this team. So now let's get into the three keys. We're going to start off with Clemson because it's pretty clear and obvious. Uh, one, have an offense of some capacity, just something. Be able to keep a consistent run game or a pass game. you got to have something offensively. Number two, you're going to need something points wise from either your defense or your special teams and maybe even both you either need a pick six a fumble six a kick return for a touchdown a punt return you need something because offensively you just don't have enough firepower in order to compete with almost anybody in the country uh, number three you cannot turn the ball over cage you cannot throw picks Maffa and Shipley, you can't fumble. And I say Maffa and Shipley, I don't know whether Shipley's playing after the hit that he took on Saturday. I have not heard an update. Uh, maybe there will be an update out later on today or on probably Monday or Tuesday. Um, I don't know whether Shipley plays. I would doubt he would after that hit. Uh, maybe he does, but I would think he's in concussion protocol. Notre Dame, a little bit easier. <laughs> Run the ball the entire game. Audric Estimate is a good running back. Uh, Jeremiah Love is a good running back. Jabron Payne. Um, whoever you want to put back there. Notre Dame just needs to simply run the ball. Uh, number two, get turnovers. It isn't that hard. Um, Notre Dame has done a great job allowing Xavier Watts to really be able uh, to play well all throughout um, this period and stuff like that uh and just getting interceptions two interceptions of back-to-back -back games played fantastic um number three uh defensively just keep doing what every defense that plays clemson does just stop them just keep them in the mud be able to play uh the game of uh field position so that way it can help out your offense who has struggled at times but overall it's in a good position 
Finally, we are going to make my prediction. This one, if it's not already clear, is it should be clear. But if it's not, Notre Dame gets the win. It's not even going to be close, guys. Uh, this is a game in which Notre Dame... I, I honestly, I don't know why. It, this game has a one and a half favored spread uh, for Clemson. And I, I could not tell you why. Oh, wait. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh man, it's been bet all the way up to minus three and a half for Notre Dame. Notre Dame started off plus one and a half. It's already at minus three and a half. Um, it the line was stupid. I don't know why it was at minus one and a half for the Tigers. Uh, now they're plus three and a half. Um, this game, it's not going to be close. It's not. It just isn't. Notre Dame's offense has not looked great. Don't get me wrong. But defensively, special teams-wise, this team is clicking on all cylinders. As long as Notre Dame does what they need to do, this is going to be a noon kickoff, the home field environment. It's going to be helpful, but it's not going to be like it is a night game at Death Valley. Night games at Death Valley, incredibly difficult, but noon kickoffs, not as much. And, that, and that's true for anybody. That's true for any environment. Uh, whether you're in Death Valley at LSU, whether you're in uh, Jordan Hare, whether you're a uh, 12th man, whether you're at Notre Dame or the Big House or the Hoshu or whatever, uh, it's easier to play a day game than it is to play a night game at these places. So, that's going to wrap up today's video. Hit two videos down below of all my Notre Dame predictions and hit the subscribe button up here. And as always, have a great day. Bye, guys.